It's time for the post-Memorial Day edition of Litter Media Live. Welcome to May 28th, 2024 with Mike Smith and Aaron Glandon, our producer. I'm Dan Ramey. Thank you for watching and joining us on this program for today. I trust you had a decent Memorial Day weekend, guys? Yeah. You went to the Indianapolis 500, right? No, I went to Indianapolis, but I did not attend the 500. It was delayed yeah. five hours because it was storming. It was, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Did you get uh, a pit stop or anything like that at all? No. Did you get your tires rotated? I did get my tires rotated, <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I got an oil change and I got my tires rotated. <laughs> In some corners, they call that something else, and I'm not even going there <laughs> in light of the stories we were just telling you. Oh, golly. If you follow the show, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> uh, if not, go back and watch some previous shows, and you'll, you'll catch up. Uh, good to have you here today. Uh, coming up in just a moment, a look at what's happening with news. We'll take a look at sports, and this date in history is sports-related. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's all. Just ahead in a matter of moments. But first, we want to take a look at our weather and see how things are shaping up for today. It was beautiful yesterday. Yeah. It was windy. Windy. Enough yeah. to blow a tree over and knock out our power down in Pike County. But um, looks like it's still windy on the map here. Yeah, I see that uh, current uh, coming through, but a little bit quieter than what some areas of our uh, uh, coverage uh, region had over the weekend. We'll talk more about that here in just a second. Sunny skies today with a high of 74, then clouds building up overnight. Uh, we'll start out with some partly sunny skies tomorrow, but then a chance of rain in the afternoon and evening. Can't beat these temperatures, though. I like the temperatures. But in Jackson, Jackson, mm -hmm. uh, they had a confirmed tornado on Sunday afternoon, mm. an EF1 tornado, according to the National Weather Service, with winds up to 90 miles per hour. Uh, damage, uh, some power lines went down. Actually, uh, there was a natural gas leak. Uh, uh, one of the businesses down there overturned a semi. Uh, but, yeah, quite a, a bit of uh, damage in that area. And it was like they didn't even have a warning, mm -hmm. which, you know, that can happen. Uh, we, we, we get these warnings for particular counties, but that doesn't mean a storm coming through your area couldn't, spin something up and it apparently did now that was afternoon right uh late afternoon because yeah. late in the evening sunday night we had a, a thunderstorm roll right. through that was pretty powerful left an inch of rain at our house yeah we had so. some well that was the <clears throat> if you might remember the reds game was supposed to start at 140 yeah. they moved it up and then they had like an hour rain delay mm -hmm. they were able to get the game finished but uh, that system it's kind of stayed south and then it uh, spun up that uh, small yeah. tornado over in Jackson. Yeah. Well, hopefully no injuries. No injuries. Just, just property yeah. damage. All right. Okay. Uh, coming up in just a moment, a look at what's making news for us today here in just a bit as I get a phone call. Um, please remind me. <laughs> <laughs> to call. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, at any rate, one person who's not watching uh, yeah, is giving yeah. us a call. Exactly. Unless they wanted to be a part of the program. Call them out, Dan. <laughs> call them out for not watching. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Wickline. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Uh, before we get into anything else, let's tell you about Haynes Total Healthcare Center, celebrating 50 years of serving the chiropractic, physical therapy, and nutritional needs of the community. You can click on this ad anywhere you see it at littermedia.com, and it will take you right to their website to learn more, haynshealth.com. Each week, Litter Media presents the Neil Coleman Insurance Wyandotte Mutual Player of the Week. If you have an athlete to nominate, any amateur athlete is eligible. Simply visit littermedia.com and click on Player of the Week. At the end of the year, we'll announce the Player of the Year. Make your nominations now at littermedia.com. Click on Player of the Week. Whenever I first applied for the Archways opportunity, oh, do I have to pay this back? Do I have to do that? Like, is it a loan? And it's not. It's a scholarship. A goal of mine is to graduate college debt free. If you're a crew member, you get $2,500 a year. And if you're a manager, you get $3,000. And especially if you're going locally to college, like to the branch or something like that, it's really helpful. Are you looking for a beer that satisfies your thirst and love of country? 
Armed Forces Brewing Company brews beer for patriots. Celebrate freedom with every sip. Armed Forces Brewing Company. Freedom never tasted so good. Visit ChillicotheOhio.com for the Ross Chillicothe Convention and Visitors Bureau. The Bean Foundation wants to raise awareness about suicide prevention by sharing 988. Trained crisis counselors are available to talk 24-7, 365. 988, save the number, save a life. To learn more about the Bean Foundation created in the memory of Bryant Bean's butt, you can call 740-703-0611. If you missed that number, click on this ad anywhere you see it on our website, littermedia.com. It takes you right to that information where you can learn more. It's news time. Yes, sir. We have news that you can find on our website, littermedia.com. You can also peruse through our uh, Facebook news feed, as well as Litter Media X for a lot of the sports that Mike keeps us up to date on, and our YouTube channel. But uh, one of the things on our YouTube channel is our lead story for today, and we turn things over to Mr. Aaron Hammond. Hammond. That's Glenn. not my What's name. Your name. <laughs> that is not my name. Aaron, Aaron runs sports at Miami Trees, yeah, doesn't he? Does. Yes. The historic Mace House will, on the campus of the Chillicothe VA Medical Center will be open for tours today through June 1st from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., except on June 1st when the tours will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Mace House at the Chillicothe VA Medical Center was built in 1826, and today is a military museum, as you can see in this video, open to the public. Mary Mace Miller talks about how the house is was built in the early 18, 1800s and has now become a military museum. We have the Marines and the Navy. This corner over here, we have all female uniforms from all the branches. This is one piece of memorabilia that should be of interest. After World War I, and Camp Sherman was closed down, the government felt that the soldiers coming back needed skills, so they set up a vocational programs for the veteran, and they called it Sherman Tech. I found that really interesting. And when we first started working, the DAR started working on this, we thought, what is this loom doing here? Well, that was one of the skills that they taught, was how the weaving, and it talks about it. And again, you can see this on our YouTube channel, Litter Media. Just search Litter Media. Or you can type in Mace House, and that will probably take you right there too, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. I'd say yes. There's a lot of people that uh, have asked when I was talking about this uh, feature that we were going to do, or Aaron put together, where is it? Well, you've probably passed by it. Mm -hmm. A thousand times, and you just didn't know. It's right there by the golf course. Yeah, if you've there. ever golfed there, it, you've yeah. been right past it. Right. Mm. But, uh, again, that starts today, and it'll be going through the centennial where you can get in to see for yourself uh, what's inside the Mace House. And so, she also told me if you're not available any time during this week, you can email her, and you can find her email um, in our website story, and she'll book you a private tour. Good deal. Very nice. Very good. Big weekend this weekend oh, yeah, at absolutely. the VA, and this is part of it. Yeah, the big 100-year uh, celebration of the Veterans Affairs Medical Center. Join the Friends of Hopewell Culture National Historical Park on June the 5th from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at Ohio University Chillicothe Stevenson Center for an insightful discussion led by this fella, Logan York, Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Miami Tribe of Oklahoma. York will discuss native history and tribal citizens' connections to place, history, and culture. York represented the Miami Nation at the 45th session of the World Heritage Committee in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, where Hopewell ceremonial earthworks were inscribed on the World Heritage List. Now, this event is free, but reservations are requested for planning purposes. The Ohio House of Representatives unanimously passed House Bill 37, also known as Liv's Law. It's legislation that would raise the penalty for aggravated vehicular homicides committed by drunk drivers. 
The legislation was spearheaded by State Representatives Mark Johnson of Chillicothe and Kevin Miller of Newark. Liv's Law is named after the Ohio native Olivia Wright, whose life was cut short as a victim of drunk driving. The bill also increases the look back for prior offenses from the current 10 years to 20 years. For the first time, if one tests more than twice the legal limit, which is .08, you will face stiffer penalties. And I know in going back and forth, visiting with Mark Johnson about this, they've worked three years on this bill to, to get it to happen. So uh, just making it tighter and tougher and making it safer for us on the roadways. Community Action Committee of Pike County is delighted to announce its upcoming Vendor Fair event. That's going to be happening June the 1st, this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Pike County Senior Citizen Center there in Waverly. A lot of activities that will be taking place that day. The event's a fundraiser for the CAC's Events Committee, which orchestrates the annual community events that provide resources, entertainment, and information to the Pike County area. Our road report takes us to Fairfield County, but this this is one you want to listen closely to because this involves a lot of people that use State Route 159 going out of Ross County. But it takes place in Fairfield County beginning Wednesday, tomorrow. State Route 159 will be closed just north of Pleasant Valley Road Southwest for approximately 70, that's right, 70 days for a bridge replacement. The detour is on 159 to 56 to 22 to State Route 159. I was just out that way late last week on the way to Pickerington to go to the ball games. So um, John Halley of uh, Sporting Pumpkin brought this to my attention. I said, yeah, I did see that sign. So starting tomorrow, if you're heading out that way to go to Lancaster or wherever, um, pick a different route. And that's a look at topic. There are many roads that lead to Lancaster. It's just uh, you won't be able to use that one. Exactly. All right. Coming up shortly, a look at sports details next. But first, accurate heating, cooling, and plumbing is your trusted comfort advisor. If you have an issue in your residence or your business, they do a lot of commercial work around here as well. Accurate heating, cooling, and plumbing. Click on this ad anywhere you see it on our website, littermedia.com, and it takes you right to accuratehvac.com to learn more about their service territory, which is pretty wide. It stretches from Columbus south to Portsmouth and from uh, west over by uh, Dayton all the way to the east in Athens. Accurate heating, cooling, and plumbing. This is Andy Tomlinson. When ensuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. Find a career you love with Pickaway Ross Adult Education. Skilled trades careers are in high demand with no signs of slowing down. Pickaway Ross offers career training programs with expert instructors and hands-on learning tactics to create a variety of opportunities. Visit our website for more information. For transportation options in Ross County, call Ross County Health District's Mobility Management Team, 740-779-9652. Sino Valley Dumpsters, give them a call at 740-253-8389. If you've got a need for a dumpster, they can help you out. They'll bring one, set it where you need it, and then when you're done filling it up, they'll haul it all away. That makes the job nice and easy. And it's uh, not only for residential, but also for businesses, too. Scioto Valley Dumpsters, 740-253-8389. And when you click on this ad anywhere you see it on our website, littermedia.com, it takes you to their Facebook page where they keep things up to date as the things that they are doing through Scioto Valley Dumpsters. Time for sports. Now, a lot of this is actually old news because it uh, hit the uh, website on Friday night through Saturday. Uh, some things, though, we'll touch on here that uh, got an update, and we'll tell you why that's the case. But congratulations to Logan Elm, South Webster, and Liberty Union, all teams in our coverage area that won regional softball championships and are headed to the state final four this weekend at uh, – Firestone Stadium up in Akron, Ohio. South Webster shocked the world. <laughs> that was un- unbelievable. It, it was kind of like we were getting updates on that score in Pickerington, and I thought, that can't be right. And 
we kept double checking and at Wheelersburg, who had been two time defending state champ, they've been the four straight final fours. They beat South Webster in their conference twice, rather handily. South Webster was prepared. They were ready to go and they yeah. knock off Berg and they're going instead of the other way around. Mm-hmm. High school baseball, Waverly and Washington Courthouse head to the regional semifinals. They'll meet each other at Ohio University's Wren Stadium. That's coming up on Thursday at 2 o'clock. I'll be there to uh, send back some X media reports uh, as well as getting some photos and some video not x, rated x, x media <laughs> litter media x also barnesville will be taking on uh minford in division three uh, that uh, is at ohio dominican uh, they've got teams scattered all over the place in fact uh, in the region where fair uh, fairland takes on portsmouth that's at ou but minford playing barnesville at ohio dominican and then the two winners will come together at that uh, neutral site. Uh, Leesburg Fairfield out of Highland County, they're taking on uh, Greenwich South Central, which is actually out of the Northwest District. They're going to Lancaster, as is Eastern Megs and Berlin Highland. Now, one of the stories that got a little bit of an update uh, from Saturday is the track meets. Uh, All of the qualifiers that came out of the regionals to go to state typically and i think they they changed this a few years ago typically it was always the top four well then they changed it so that you would have a wild card spot where let's say out of our region if a kid had a fifth place finish but their time was better than anybody else in the state they get what's called a a a wild card spot or an at-large spot so that happened to Kiera Archer of Chillicothe. Mm-hmm. She finished fifth, which typically would put her out, but her time of 56 seconds, I believe, in the 400 ended up being one of the top times in the state. So she makes it as that wild card. So that is updated on our website, that story there that also mentioned that Fairfield Union boys and girls won regional team championships. They've been dominant that this is, year. Yeah. Uh, but in uh, in that story uh, for Division One and Three combined, you'll find some updated information on those links, and also the Southern Ohio Conference named their all uh, league team for softball. You can find all of that on our website story. You can join the Pickaway County Board of DD for their special Olympics powerlifting that's taking place this Saturday, from ten forty five until one thirty p.m. Not sure why 1045. Yeah. Maybe that's to get you there early. Uh, and that's a Circleville High School Fieldhouse. Admission is free. And you know what Mike Smith says? If it's, well, Mar- I stole it from Marty Brenneman. If it's free, it's me. It's me. Yes. Uh, Reds, speaking of Marty Brenneman, uh, who's no longer you know, associated day to day with the Reds, picked up another W. Look at that. Uh, they have won four straight. Ooh. They've changed up their home run celebration. No more King uh, Viking helmet and cape. They go down into the hallway back towards the clubhouse and everybody files down in there and they hoot and holler and then they come back like nothing happened. Yeah. So it's an interesting take on that. But a 3-1 win over the Cardinals yesterday. They're back at it again tonight. Oh, they swept the uh, Dodgers over the weekend, too. Guardians were tripped up by the Rockies yesterday, 8-6 the final there, and they had a weekend sweep of the New York Mets. You skipped the story. I did? Yeah, the, the late uh, edition that we discovered right here. Ah, uh, Thank you, because that was not on my screen. You're right. We added it. Um, it's finally here, opening day, for the Prospect League. And of Chillicothe Paints traveling to Lafayette, Indiana, to take on the Lafayette Aviators. And that'll be tonight and tomorrow night. And then their home opener is Thursday. Looking forward to that. And remember, that is all. Uh, the home uh, opener is in conjunction with the uh, Centennial Celebration. The players will be wearing the special jerseys? Not yet. Oh, I thought that was going to be that night on opening night. Opening night is Thursday. Right. Celebration is on Saturday. So they'll wear those jerseys on Saturday. Saturday, gotcha. yes. yes. I think uh, they had that 
on the show that we did with them, they were showing. Kind of mm-hmm. looks like a softball uniform is what it put me in mind. Of. Like it, it has stars up around here. It's kind of a gold color mm-hmm. and then blue down at the bottom here. And they, uh, they've they done this before uh, on other nights, and then they auction those jerseys off. But uh, those will be available, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, Terry McCourt said that they would be available in the Paints gift shop. I think that's right. Uh, after yeah. they've been worn. So. Uh, and washed. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. But uh, if you go like the, the Reds gift shop at mm-hmm. the, the Great American Ballpark, they have game-worn jerseys and everything there, too. So something, something these will be far less expensive than right. trying to buy one of the Reds game-worn jerseys, as you can imagine. Yes, sir. Yeah. But think about this now. When you buy one of these jerseys, this is the prospect league, mm-hmm. and a number of these guys make it to – the higher levels, minor league, and some on to the major league level. Uh, We saw recently where the uh, Prospect League Hall of Fame was having their induction. Mike Schmidt was one of those, Kirby Kirby Puckett, Puckett. you know, so these are big names that are going in there. And and that's been the coolest thing about seeing these guys play here. Uh, Back when the paints began in 1993, it was guys who were on their last opportunities right. to make it to the bigs. And then after, uh, I'm trying to remember what year it was, 2010 maybe, 2009, right. uh, they switched over to the Prospect League. And so they left the Frontier League, created the Prospect League Association, and all these guys still have college eligibility. Mm-hmm. And so they're playing their college ball, and then – they age out college-wise, but many of them find themselves being drafted during the season. Yeah. So, so it's really cool to see this happen. And uh, we, we all have pointed and said, I remember when. Oh, yeah. And that guy was playing right here in Chillicothe, Ohio. Uh, in fact, they've got a new manager this year. Forgive me. I, I didn't prepare for his name. Um, he is a former Chillicothe Paints player. Uh, came to us in a trade with um, – uh, was it the Gateway Grizzlies, I think it was? And so he made Chillicothe his home in that respect. But I believe he also played college ball at Rio Grande. And high school at Westfall. Yeah, so he is a local guy. And uh, But here's why I'm bringing this all up. They have had a new manager for the last three seasons now. The previous two won the Prospect League Championship. So the pressure's on, buddy. The pressure's so on. This is like the old uh, radio, eat your pizza and get out. <laughs> not we, the case. We not, gave not you a big award, now get out. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, these, <laughs> these guys, they, they I, I want it. Why, why go back? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, How can I do better than that? Yeah. But now as a franchise, the Paints are trying to go back to back to back. And uh, you can be a part of that this year at the ballpark. All right, that's it for sports. Coming up, speaking of ballparks, this state in history takes us back to what year? 1957. Details next. Litter Quality Propane. They have been around for 92 years of serving propane users in southern and central Ohio. Reliable supply, reliable service, reliable people. We're talking litter quality propane. <laughs> At Rathcam Financial, we offer customized investment solutions and superior client service. We believe in long-term relationships and working to earn your continued trust. Our greatest satisfaction comes from working with clients for many years and helping them realize their dreams. As a professional race car driver, I live for speed, power, and performance on and off the track. That's why I use the Dixie Chopper, the world's fastest lawnmower. Race into your local dealership today and test drive a new Dixie Chopper. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier. Transactions are getting safer. And you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our Kingston National Bank mobility app today. As a basketball coach and a dad, I need to be able to keep up. 
Mark came to the Adena Orthopedic and Spine Institute in severe arm pain from a degenerative disc. I was so confident in Dr. Fleming, he explained everything. Together, they decided on minimally invasive spinal surgery to relieve Mark's pain and get him back to what matters most. At Adena, we do what we love, so you can too. He still uses that arm to push mm -hmm. off. <laughs> I see that. Foul, offensive foul. <laughs> it is time now for this date in history. There was a great outcry in the Big Apple on this date in 1957. Mm. They might have been saying, say it ain't so. National League owners vote unanimously on this date in 1957 to allow the New York Giants, who played in that stadium on the left top, that's the polo grounds, and the Brooklyn Dodgers, that's on the right, Ebbets Field, to move to San Francisco and Los Angeles, respectively, and this happened at the mid-season owners' meeting in Chicago. Now, Yankee Stadium is in the lower left-hand corner. When these two teams leave New York City, where the major leagues had at that time three pro teams in New York City, now the Yankees will be the only one left. And I'm wondering how they supported three Major League Baseball teams. Well, look how close. I mean, this is not an edited photo. Yeah. Look how close Yankee Stadium and the polo grounds were together. Mm -hmm. They were just across the river. And all those baseball fields outside of Yankee Stadium. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that, kind of Well, cool that's too. where the kids went to play, you know, before. Yeah. But um, before Yankee Stadium was built, which, of course, became known as the house that Ruth built, the Yankees played at the polo grounds. Mm -hmm. But think about the years that the Yankees – and the Giants played in the World Series against each other when those two stadiums were together. Yeah. You didn't have to travel very far. <laughs> <laughs> and if you showed up at the wrong one, it wasn't that far yeah. to go to get to the oh, other yeah. one. Oh, yeah, we're over there today. You just had to swim the river. Yeah. That's all. So. Of course, we now know that uh, a team did come back to New York. Yes. And that's called the New York Metropolitans. And who would have thought that um, when the Dodgers left town, that in... 2024, they would be swept by the Cincinnati Reds in a series. I think I saw so. this is the first time the Reds have won four straight since July of last year. Sounds right. Yeah. 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 So but right now they, they got 10 games below 500. Now they're six under 500. They're climbing back. And, and I was looking yesterday. Uh, Mark Sheldon had, had written a story uh, about he, he's a Reds beat reporter. He had written about Pittsburgh has a run differential of minus 30, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And the Cardinals is minus 28. Mm -hmm. The Reds run differential is minus three. Mm -hmm. So you, you look at how many one run games they've lost oh, yeah. that could have gone the other way. And who knows? I mean, they wouldn't be leading the division, but they would be in the thick of things. Right. And there's still what? Seven and a half back, six Something and a half like back. No. It's still, and now they're jumping into inter, their inter divisional play. play. Yeah. So with that being said, they've got a chance to really make hay. So they're playing the Cardinals now. Cardinals are not the Cardinals team that they have been in the past. Um, around the corner, they got the Cubs. Cubs and I think uh, the Brewers are one and two in the division right now. So. But the we'll Brewers have been murder on the Reds the last few years. They so. have, but Craig Council's not there anymore. But the guy who stepped in seems to be making things happen. And Craig Council's now in Chicago with the Cubs. So right. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't seem to uh, – we're not getting a break, I guess, is the way to say it. Yeah. By so. the way, the Boston Celtics did sweep – the Indiana Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals. So they're on their way to the finals. They're still waiting to see if Dallas can finish off Minnesota in a sweep. And Since you bring up the NBA, how about the passing of Bill Walton? Bill Walton, that's where we were going next. I was surprised by that. Uh, he I was, was unaware. That 86 uh, Celtics uh, World Championship team that beat Houston. Uh, Bill, of course, also was a world champion with the Portland Trailblazers, their only NBA title when he was there. And a world champion with the UCLA Bruins. <laughs> well, a national college uh, <laughs> champion twice. But uh, Bill Walton, he was, they were showing some video of him 
in his um, annex as an announcer, mm. where he'd come in with these wild sunglasses or, uh, you know, a Hawaiian lay around his neck. And the, the, somebody had given him and his uh, colleague a cupcake that had a candle. And he, the guy said, why don't you go ahead, Bill, and eat the, the cupcake with the candle. And he stuck the lit candle <laughs> and the cupcake in his mouth all at one time. So, But he was a Doesn't character. Doesn't surprise me. Was he on an Olympic team? You know, I can't remember that. I, in fact, I don't think he was. He, Bill's knees and feet were beaten up so badly uh, that when he was with the Celtics, uh, they won it in 86, but – they would have probably repeated the following year, but he was he missed so many games because of injuries that uh, he just uh, wasn't able to do what he did for him in '86. Yeah. Uh, he was he was something else. All right, that's it for the program today. We are back at it again tomorrow. We have a special edition tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We'll be visiting with Jack Schmidt from the uh, folks at Kenworth, and I believe he might be bringing somebody else with him too. I'm not going to say names, but uh, I believe he he will not be flying solo. But we're going to talk about the truck parade, which is coming up June 15th, and we'll get a preview of that. And uh, looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. And also coming up uh, tomorrow afternoon, we're scheduled to speak with in a Zoom conference with uh, the new executive director of the Eyes of Freedom. And we'll hope to have that for you to take a look at Wednesday, uh, or tomorrow is Wednesday, it's holiday week here, uh, Thursday, uh, because it is coming to be a part of the celebration out of the VA for their centennial celebration. So until next time. Thank you for watching Litter Media Live.